Eric, how nice is it to, to have some semblance of kind of back to camp normalcy after the last couple of years and, and being able to have your daughter out here and that kind of just personal moment that's been so missing the last couple of years? Yeah, I mean, everything feels normal again and, you know, just getting back in the swing of things and um, family able to come out and watch practice and soon have open practice to the fans. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to have everything back to normal. For you, does anything change? I mean, you've been through so many of these camps at this point. Does anything really change about how you go about it from a day-to-day -day or just kind of a week-to-week -week basis? No, not really. I always just try to prepare the same and come out here and try to get better. Seems like you've done more. Derek, it seemed like you did a lot of work in the pit and that kind of thing, but you're doing a little bit more this year. Is that because you were, you know, you were off with the injury last year, or is that a diff just a change in strategy? Uh, no, just uh, coming and get some work and um, uh, get some reps in full speed. Um, want to be out here with the team and um, you know, just whatever coach wants me to do, I'm, you know, going out there trying to do and just trying to be a good teammate. But um, just just happy to be out here with the team and you know, back to football. So. How much input did you personally have into the, the plan for you throughout training camp? I mean, did you discuss it with the coaches, or was it a here's what we're going to do with you and how we're going to manage you through it? Um, coach usually comes to me and um, tells me a plan, and you know, I just say, yes, sir, and go, go out there and do it. As you continue to stack these seasons and our <coughs> volumes, I know it's something you're not overly concerned about, but do you begin to kind of tweak just the way you – you prepare for the season or, or throughout the week for, for games? Uh, no, not at all. Um, you know, just continue to to do what I've done, um, not get too carried away with it, um, and trust in, trust in what I do, just taking care of my body and preparing the right way with these guys out here and then going out there and trying to help them win. Looks like you gave uh, um, Traylon maybe a fist bump or, or two yesterday as he went through kind of day one out here. I wondered if maybe remembered back to your days as a, as a rookie going through the first days of training camp and relate to him a little bit that way? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, just want to uh, tell him good job. And, you know, he's been doing a good job out here these last two days. And yesterday he made some good catches, um, playing with confidence. And just want to make sure he keeps it, he keeps it up. You know, he's going to be able to make a lot of plays for us. So just happy to see him. Happy to see him come out here and make plays. Rick Blair said he was not a big fan of yours at Alabama, but he said you're his favorite player in the NFL. Did you get a chance to talk to him? Uh, no, I, I didn't get a chance to talk to him. Hopefully I can catch him before he leaves. But I wasn't a big fan of his when I used to watch wrestling, too, because I always thought he was, a, he was a bad guy. But it's pretty cool to have a guy like him. Um, you know, he's a legend in the um, in the WWE world. So, you know, it's cool to be able to, to meet him, hear him talk, and hear him say my name. You know, I watched him on TV growing up you know, for a long time. So, you know, it's kind of surreal, you know, to meet people like him and, you know, come out here and let him talk to us at the practice. Derek, how do you judge what is a good practice for you or what is a bad practice for you? If I feel like I didn't do my job good enough, so I feel like I didn't I didn't do well, then, you know, that's not a good practice. But, you know, um, you know I'm always looking to, to improve. Um, Whenever it's, it's a good day, you try to find the things that you could have done better and um, you know, just focus on that and just try to get better every day while we're out here. So far through the two days, do you feel like you've done that and had good practices as opposed to bad practices? Or? I mean, I'm not aiming to have a bad practice, but I'm just aiming out here to, to come out here and get better. Um, if, it's, if I have a bad play, try to do better on the next play and just try to get better every day, whether it's, whether it's good or bad. Uh, the, the main goal is always to improve each and every day while you're in training camp. Derek, if someone asked him to come up to you and just kind of ask you for some advice and see, you know, do anything extra with him being a rookie and, and having you as a guy that to look up to? Um, you know, I mean, we, we work together. So, you know, whenever we are in meetings or on the field, um, you know, we just – I guess he's watching me while working. And uh, anytime he has a question, um, he asks. He's a confident kid, a confident player. And um, he played very well in college. So I don't, I don't think it's too hard for him adjusting. But anytime he has a question, anytime I want to, you know, give him some tips or, or anything like that, you know, I'm always willing to do that. And um, But he's been doing well, so. Is uh, Eddie asking for a little, little pub today? Eddie George asking for a little pub? Oh, no, no, actually. But um, where I work out at, it's a kid that I work out with that, Sells like vintage T-shirts, has a little uh, a little business, and he told me he found this one. So I was like, "Yo, I definitely take it." So that moment you shared with your daughter on the field yesterday that kind of went viral. What? How cool was that for you to have a moment like that and, and kind of share it with uh, with 
Um, yeah, it was um, something that, you know, she can look at whenever she, you know, gets older. You know, having these moments are always precious, especially with your kids. Because, um, you, know, you know, being in football and training camp, you know, it takes up a lot of time. But anytime you get moments like that, you always cherish those moments and something that we can look back at and, um, you know, laugh at and you know, have some joy from. Yeah, she, she, she's always running, so y'all caught her and, you know, full stride, so. The approach doesn't change. Nothing changes train camp to train camp. But do you overall feel stronger or just more experienced despite coming off? Yeah. Um, the goal is always to uh, elevate my game and get better year after year. Um, and that's always been my focus. And um, you know, I always train the same way. And you know, but the goal is always to be better each and every year. Like in practice, when you hit the hit the hole, let's say in between the left yard or whatever, do you, do you notice any nuances or differences in the way the hole? Uh, no, not at all. Um, Coach Keith does a great job with those guys, and we have great leaders in our room, Ben, Taylor, um, and Nate. I mean, they know the standard. They know how we're supposed to play, so those guys fall in um, right in place, and everything's been good. The mental aspect of uh, being like Robert, you know, kind of learning to, to trust the leg when you're, when you're cutting or sprinting or, you know, jumping. How, how is that process going for you? Uh, good. Just just go. Like I kind of said, uh, kind of with the braces, more so just go and push it. Um, it's, it's strong enough, it's prepared, it's healed. Um, it's more so about just actually doing it. So that's my, my mentality when I go out here and practice is push it and go. And you almost want to like push it to the limits and see what you can do. And that's what I'm trying to do. How you look forward to before with Ryan has, has come along so far? I know it's still early in training camp, but you guys have had um, a little bit more time since the last time we talked to you. Yeah, just trying to, trying to get everything down. Really uh, had a few reps with them. Uh, I'm in the live action, but more so just trying to what well, we say is still reps when uh, sometimes they're special teams. I'm able to get some extra reps with them. I'm off to the side trying to get an extra rep, uh, some work, some routes that could be critical for us uh, down the season. Um, some of our bread and butter plays, I uh, just try to get those extra reps, pick his brain. We, we talk about flattening some routes and just trying to just be, be in rhythm as early as we can. What you look forward to the first padded practice so that you can just get that first full contact and hit out of the way and know that the knee's ready? Uh, I'm, I don't really think about my knee, whether it's pads or no pads. It's, it's football. I'm just trying to go. I don't think about getting hit. I feel like that's that's a part of the game. I'm not out here thinking uh, about getting hit or, or giving hits. I'm more so just thinking about making plays and attacking. Um, I feel like, like I said, it, it's strong enough. It's durable. Um, more so when I'm thinking about pads, it's more so about um, getting pads clacking and, and blocking and Having that football mentality, hearing the sound, making our running back spring free, uh, making guys miss. Uh, I'm not even thinking about my knee at, at this point. What was your routine maybe from the time mini camp ended until training camp began? And maybe how was that different maybe in years when you weren't coming off of, of, a, of an injury? Actually, I was trying to train the same. I uh, Once I kind of left here, um, I got the freedom to um, to, to, to train how I trained. So I was being able to gets a lot of track work in, trying to be uh, work my explosion. Um, did a lot of uh, single leg landing, um, single leg jumps. Just really trying to work on that explosion. Um, bounds, being able to just be strong in multiple different positions, uh, especially in, in like a, a split position, which I'm mostly in as a receiver. Jalen Farley has said that it's a luxury having a veteran like you to push in, in, in rehab and training, but then also in practice. What, what's your side of that? Just how, you know, having Caleb there to be someone else who's going through the same thing. Yeah, uh, for me, Caleb is a uh, he's a resource for me as well. I know he's a young player, but he's he's young, talented, strong, fast, um, quick. And I think for me, being able to train with him and rehab with him, um, being able to do some of these, these shuttle presses, uh, run hills with them, um, work releases with them. So that's someone even just condition with him. That's somebody uh, who I could I could work with. Um, who we could work with each other and feed off of each other being able to run hills, having somebody next to me compete, and then come out here and work releases. And we have a being able to work through releases and, and talk about my experience and what he what he likes and how he plays. And really just, like I said, it's, it's still in reps any kind of way that we can. But uh, just really having somebody who's young, um, being able to, to keep, keep me young and being able to just work and, and run and really just feel youthful like that. Yeah, Robert, what are your impressions yeah. of him? 
Yeah, I like Caleb. I, uh, I'm, I'm expecting big things from Caleb, um, hoping that he, he plays really well for us. Um, came out strong, had two interceptions on, on one of the days. Um, but really just um, he's, he's, he's big, he's strong, he's physical, um, he's fast. Um, really just need him to make plays for us, and uh, he's done so thus far. I'm sorry, was it, was it you know, a coach or a trainer's idea for you and Caleb to work that closely together, to do so much together, or has it just kind of evolved? It kind of just evolved. I think we, our timeline of injury was kind of around the same point of uh, when I came in and rehab. Uh, so we were kind of always doing the same drills, um, and then even just challenging each other uh, in the weight room. Um, I remember Todd asking me, like, what was one of the things I would – like to do when I, I saw the hill in the parking lot. I was like, can we run that hill? And then me and Caleb are, are running that hill once a week. Um, and I think that was really just us pushing each other, challenging each other. He also had a, a track background, so we know how important it is to be able to be run uh, run and be able to drive off the ball and uh, start on the hill, start on these conditioning, um, and just kind of just pushing each other, um, showing what, what helps my knee, um, what hurts his knee, what hurts my knee, and vice versa being able to find ways to strengthen it in, in different ways. Uh, from our vantage point, it seems like Traylon is, you know, showing some encouraging signs. Just um, from, from where, where you stand, how have you kind of seen him progress since the end of the off-season program? Uh, being able to be out here, I know uh, it kind of started um, from what I saw you guys were saying, asthma and not being able to practice and stuff. And uh, him first being able to be out here and practice and showcase his ability um, being on the field is was a big, big aspect for him and uh, for us and uh, for everybody, really, just him being able to show, showcase his talents, being able to make plays on, on day one, showcase his speed, his size, and uh, he's going to be a big play, player for us and uh, really just uh, need him to be available. I know you weren't going first in, in some drills during the off season and, and even yesterday. Do you, you were today. Do, do you like do you like to go first? Is that important to you? Was that a matter of injury recovery or? Yeah, I, I personally like to go first. I'm still learning the the drills that Rob has has us doing, and I know that some of the guys have experience at and what he expects and how, what the standard is. So I just want to see it, see it done, and then trying to get my reps in. Uh, today I was able to go first because of some drills that we're familiar with, and uh, really I like to just set the tone for the group. Um, we starting fast. Uh, we catch the ball and we get a good burst. And uh, once you kind of see the first guy do it, it kind of trickles down to everybody. Um, it's really just like setting the standard and setting the tone for how we're practicing and how we're getting that rep done. Would you like to need to get any work in the preseason? And, and if not, what do you need to do, I guess, between now and the time the season starts to make sure you're peaking and ready to go? Yeah, my, my biggest objective is being ready for week one. Um, I'm, I'm honing in on everything we're doing in every practice, uh, trying to get some extra reps with Ryan, like I said. Uh, if coach asks me to go out there, I'll, I'll be ready to go. Um, but really, it's just um, being ready for week one, getting our timing down, getting all these reps that we can, and uh, just being ready when, when my name is, my number is called. For a veteran team like this, what do you make of the professionalism that you walked into here? Yeah, I, I kind of knew what I was coming into uh, and into this trade, being able to kind of pick. I was I was coming to a team who had a, a solid foundation, who was able to have a great running game, a great uh, passing game, a great defense, um, who was solid all around. Uh, like you said, an experienced group, a veteran group, um, who, who knows how to practice. It's not a rebuild. It's not a restart. They already have their culture built. Um, and it's really just coming in here and, and bringing my game to this culture and trying to add another attitude. But it's really just uh, picking, picking up where this team left off. This is a great team, a great coaching staff. and. Uh, we won a lot of football games last year. We got to do the same thing. Um, coach said, you know, last year it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter. But uh, a lot of these guys are back, and a lot of these guys are hungry to, to, to win games. What has been the key for you? Just because throughout your career, your, your drop rate is really low. It's among the best in the league. The percentage wise, like how few you drop, to make sure that's clear. Um, what has been the key for that despite so many targets? And do you feel like that's something to kind of set the foundation? for the trust that Ryan Tannehill will have in you? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, the ball is, the ball's in the air. It's coming to me. Uh, uh, you you got to catch it. I remember my dad used to always say, is, uh, is, uh, touches, touches, and touchdowns. Like, you don't get many touches every time you touch it. You got to go for a touchdown. And this it's the same thing since since Pop Warner. Um, the ball got to get spread around um, through, through everybody. It's a lot of players who want the ball. So when you get your opportunity, you got to capitalize on it. Um, you got to be reliable. 
you gotta be trustworthy. Um, when the, when the quarterback throws you the ball, he's 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 trying to get a completion and move those chains. And I, I love to come to get the ball in, in third down situations, key situations where we gotta have it. Um, I don't know. It's just something about getting the ball. You don't get many opportunities, so when you do, you gotta capitalize. Are you someone that lobbies to the quarterback? Like, hey, man, you know, you gotta come to me. Is, is that your your mo? Like, how you? Doing? Yeah, I mean, every every play, every every opportunity. Uh, you, you do that, but you do that by by being open, being open target, being consistent at practice. Um, so when you do say those things, the quarterback knows and trusts that you are going to be there. Uh, it starts at practice. You can't just show up on game day and, and demand the ball. You're coming from an offense that was pretty receiver heavy a lot of the time in L.A., and now with Austin and Chig seemingly getting really involved in, in the Titans scheme, how does that affect your job or what you're trying to do out there? Does it make it easier at all for you now having a, an established tight end option there for Ryan as well? Yeah, I, w I would say so. Uh, I mean, as a receiver, especially uh, playing playing in L.A., we had uh, Tyler Higby, Gerald Everett. We always had tight ends, and I know how important it is uh, to have somebody like that. I, I used to call our tight ends our hogs because they're they're big receivers. You know, they, they're hard to tackle. Um, they're physical. They're fast, especially Chig. He's a – He's going to be a huge player for us. His speed is is, is rare in his size. Um, so I, I'm definitely in his ear always like, we're going to need you to make plays. Uh, Hooper, always veteran, knows how to get separation. Um, but it's definitely going to be really huge to be able to spread the ball around. You want to have mismatches all around the field, and I think we have that in our passing game, and especially uh, on the ground with Derek. Mike, with the with the ramp up period, how how important are days like this to you know? Uh, is it focus on fundamentals or is it? More yeah, well, just so what we're trying to do is is have an extended individual period, kind of break it up throughout practice, focus on technique, fundamentals, and conditioning uh, through those extended team or individual periods, and then you know try to focus on the details uh, when we get to the team stuff, you know, allowing us to to go two spot and. And kind of pull back on the tempo a little bit, and you know, hopefully that's gonna that's gonna benefit us well throughout camp. You mentioned the guardian camp, uh, and, and then you talk guys through the, the purpose mm -hmm. of them. Could could you go a little bit more into it and and talk about the adjustment some guys have? To I don't think that there's been much of an adjustment. I really think after the first day, um, I, I, you don't really even notice them, and I haven't heard. You know, any any complaints or, you know, I think that they, you know, have acclimated them to them well. And, um, you know, we added, the, you know, a little stripe just to make sure that, you know, as we're watching tape that guys, you know, eyes, so much of this this game is where your eyes are. And so some of those guys off, offensively, the linemen, you know, we put, put a stripe on there just so that they, you know, we can coach them up and watching the tape of where their eyes are. How did that process come about as far as you guys wearing the, them uh, so much? Well, I think part of the, the competition committee um, that I think part of the role is to try to make the, the game uh, as, as great and safe as they possibly can. Uh, we hear from from BioCore, our, our, um, the, the engineers and you know, the doctors and the NFL Players Association, Dr. Meyer, Dr. Sills, Dr. Miller at the league and you know, they present the information. They present all the injuries. And then, you know, we try to go about ways to figuring out ways to, to prevent them, to make our players um, as healthy as possible. And this was part of it. They said that the technology has changed. They presented it. And, um, you know, collectively, we all we all said that that was the right thing to do, to, to make it, you know, mandatory throughout the 32 teams and, and those players that are around the line of scrimmage. Was Rashad Weaver maybe during the course of the offseason? Did he benefit from last year, even though he got hurt early? Well, I think what he benefited from was was being around here in the offseason to get a lot of reps, to get in shape, um, to get healthy, to study. Uh, and and the one thing that that I always respected about Rashad um, when he was you know with us last year healthy was how hard he played. You know there were things that were weren't perfect and. There were mistakes, but he played with great effort. And uh, that's always a great place to start. And I think what he's done this year now is come back healthy in camp and you know, started to try to um, look to define a role for himself, working hard on special teams. I think that's something probably that improved in the off season was his ability to, to help us on special teams or understand that. And um, for some guys coming out of college, that's new, especially those you know, defensive end types that you know, transition to 
edge players in our league, they, they have to be able to play special teams. technique that they're showing, even though they're not wearing pads right now. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things, you know, you, we, we talk about pads being for protection and, and being able to do your job or make plays with your hands, whether that's a defensive lineman or, or an offensive lineman uh, at any position. So their, their ability to, to, to punch, to replace, um, to get their backside hand, you know, in the sternum, wherever it needs to be on certain blocks, um, I, I think that it's been good, it's improved, um, but um, we're, we're just getting started. So I think some of that stuff um, will, will continue to show and we can evaluate it you know, next week, especially as we get pads on. But you know, they're able to practice all the techniques that they're going to need, um, just maybe not some of the contact and, and some of the shoulder contact that comes in on, on some blocks, you know, not all blocks. I guess uh, you work around not being the biggest. Well, guy. he's explosive. He's quick. Uh, he's tougher than you know two dollar steak, and um, you know he he use he understands the angles and trying to get the guys, and you know understands pad level, um, you know technique, and you know those are a lot of things that um, that he can do that that somebody that's bigger can't. You know just the the way that he moves. So. Um, most of them, I just like the way he competes. I like the way that he shows up to work every day and, and, and is willing to, to compete. Do you have to change anything technique-wise or tweak anything because he is a much different looking player size-wise than Roger was at that position? Um, no, I mean, I think maybe there may be some game plan things that we would do based on if there was a, you know, you know if you're playing an elite player, we would do that with whoever was there. Um, but. No, I mean, he's executing all the same things, and um, you know, I think he's worked hard. And, and, and when he did have an opportunity to play for us, he's, he's played pretty well for us. It's not like it's, um, it, it wasn't good. I mean, he's helped us win games. And what have you seen from Jamarco Jones so far? Um, I know he's been playing some, some guard. What have, how have you seen him kind of acclimate to you guys? Well, again, new system. I think there's a little bit uh, of things that have to continue to, to get you know, ironed out. And that, that, that we're teaching him, um, that he's been working on through the off season. Uh, he's got good quickness, good size, um, and, and again, he's played in, in his opportunities that he had to play in this league. Uh, he did a nice job. So, um, other than just some some minor details that are different, uh, maybe a way we're asking him to do certain things or, or you know take a, a landmark that's a little different. You know, I think that he's. Know, going to be in a position to, to compete and, and try to help us. Ben, returning punts, um, what if his skill set uh, makes you feel good about his ability to compete there? And how do you feel like he's coming along in terms of the, the competition of the few guys you have back there taking reps? Um, well, the most important is that you catch it, you know, the, that you can secure the ball. Um, I think that's where we're at right now. I think that you know, one thing that he showed when, you know, in college was that he was tough to tackle, you know, with the ball in his hand, that he was, you know, he could run after the catch. And so hopefully uh, just trying to find as many places to, to get guys that can help us. And, and if he can catch and secure and, and, and make the first guy miss, um, you know, then he has a chance to help us. But most importantly, he's got to be able to take care of the football. And um, I would say that there hasn't been an evaluation uh, for, for the punt return job. Um, catching it from the jugs, maybe a few from the punter, you know, from, from Stoney or Brett. Um, but without gunners coming at you or out live action, that, that's been hard to, you know, evaluate. I think that he's getting more comfortable catching them. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can see him out there in preseason. Did you like the efficiency of today's practice the same way you liked the efficiency of yesterday? I, I mean, I think there were times, and again, it, that's hard when, you know, introducing something that's new during training camp. Um, you know, but just looking at the data, you know, trying to make sure that we're smart on the third day, and to, and I guess to me this was the third day having having a conditioning test and then practicing. So, um, but I don't think it was a throwaway day. I thought try to evaluate what everybody was doing and how they were, you know, working and and trying to see if that was happening in the, you know, the individual drills and the group drills. I know we threw a lot of routes in the in the group drill. So I don't think that there was a lack of speed or timing there. I thought that was good. Um, 
and the jog throughs are never going to be perfect. There's 22 guys going at 22 different speeds. So uh, we talk about that there, you know, there's not a winner and a loser of the jog through. You can only you can only lose it by not knowing what to do or you know falling on the ground, I guess, or not being in the right place. How you invite uh, Rich Player here? How much you think the players enjoyed him? Well, I know they enjoyed it. Um, I know everybody enjoyed it. Uh, knew that you know he was coming in for for the weekend. You know he'll be celebrating his his final match on Sunday of, of an amazing, long, successful, sustained career. Um, and so just invited him over. Was able to visit with him before practice, and uh, and you know I thought he would love to to talk to the players, which he, he was. He was excited to come over here. He brings an energy and excitement and passion. Um, and I know that they appreciated it. And, uh, you know, I, I did. I, I certainly enjoyed seeing him and, and getting to talk to him. Who's the theme on Sunday, Mike? Uh, yeah, my plan is to try to go on Sunday. Who was the theme of what, what he told the guys? Was it relatable? Sure. Yeah, no, he talked about, you know, he talked about the family and, and all these distractions that we that we encounter on a daily basis um, and, and, and sticking together uh, and, and coming back each and every day, you know, for, to try to, you know, keep stacking days together. You know, you blink and then, you know, a, a long career is over. So just trying to stay, you know, consistent, you know, each and every day showing up and knowing that you have to show up and perform uh, with, with that type of pressure. Been a fan of yours since your playing days. It sounds like you've kind of been a fan of his too. How much? Time? You know, I don't know how you couldn't be just watching. You know, growing up Saturday mornings watching professional wrestling. You know, with with my dad, and um, you know that was something that we always did, and and just you know just listen to him give interviews and talk. And I think that uh, you know those are certain. I mean, just the entertainer uh, that that he is, and and we'll. You know, always be. When it comes to efficiency of practice, how and, and not intensity of practice, but the efficiency of doing what you want them to do, how much does that matter to you, equaling to actually winning when it comes to the process of which the team goes through? Well, I, it's hopefully that we can understand where we're at in each and every practice and what the what's being asked of them, and, and making sure that there's a clear objective. I think that's a part of my job is making sure that. They understand what's asked of them, what where, where the what's the objective of the drill, how is it going to translate uh, to to my job, and then where where where's the finish. And so, um, going from different tempos sometimes isn't always easy. Um, so, you know, the the efficiency has to be well when you're in a jog through that you're 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 playing at full speed to the ball snap that you're lining up. You know what your splits are. You know what the call is. You know what the checks are. And, you know, sometimes that that can be even harder when you're not going full speed because you tend to relax a little bit. So you know, we'll take a look at it again. We'll be able to coach from it, um, and then we'll move on to tomorrow. Asking Last Caleb uh, just about what the most rewarding part of his journey back is as he cleared different hurdles, and he said really just actually being back on the field. He said learning to walk again is a real kind of reality check. I'm curious from your guys' standpoint as coaches, how much mental coaching is involved with him as he goes through that process? Uh, you know, I mean, there's going to be, you know, I think now we're, you know, we're probably past some of that. I think the, the most important conversations were, were in, in December and January, staying focused, staying committed, um, not getting frustrated. You know, those are, those are all things. And, you know, if there was, you know, there were some bad days that, that, that he came in and, and I think that there were far many more good days and, and great days than there were, you know, days that he, you know, maybe were, was struggling. But now I think that there's the excitement of playing football, of feeling better, um, and we'll just handle those as they come like we would any other player. Thanks, guys. Thank you.